Hello, Gary Perkins um, from Sussex First Aid Courses. I would just like to run you through your drug kit today. Um, often I'm being asked what should be in the drug kit. So here we are, I've got one that's laid out and bear with me, but I'm gonna go through it in detail with you um, as to what should be in the drug kit. This is one that we've designed and we do supply through our website. Our emergency drug kit should be kept in a place that everyone knows where it is and it's easy to grab. Also, I highly recommend your drug kit is color coded to the national standards, color coded to make life easy. Um, inside that drug kit, consider keeping your medical emergency color coded manual. This is also something that I've written myself color-coded treatment pages that go with the color-coded pack. So what should be in the kit? Let's just have a start with the blue pouch then. The blue pouch is for asthma. Inside your blue pouch you should ideally have a volumatic or a spacer kept in there for emergency use and then of course you should have your salbutamol pump. So in the blue pouch then for asthma attack you may have a larger volumatic or known as a spacer or you may have the smaller type. Keep it in the kit nice and ready to be used in a medical emergency and if you have the uh, medical emergency manual well refer to the blue page and it gives you your treatment guide, your signs and symptoms and again your drug dosages. Heart attacks, chest pains, cardiac emergencies, they come in the red pouch there. And um, often when I go to practices, the, you'll find the GTN and the aspirin in separate bags or all over the show. No, um, medical emergencies then is red. Inside there, you have, have your GTN spray. Um, GTN spray, yours may look like this. It may just be a little pink bottle. And then, of course, there should be aspirin inside there. This is all part of the standard treatment for um, chest pain, uh, cardiac emergencies. So aspirin, GTN spray to be kept in the red pouch there. If you don't have a medical manual with all your drug dosages, you will need to know your drug dosages. So it's OK having your drugs and things in plastic bags or colour coded bags you may have done yourself. But you need to know the drug dosages. So be sure you have a guidelines, the correct guidelines and the correct dosages to go with the colour coded pouches. OK. Anaphylaxis. Now, of all the medical emergencies, I have to say, this is the one that's going to cause you quite a bit of stress and anxiety if you're not careful. Now, some of you um, in your pouches, in your truckets, may have the classic auto-injector, or otherwise known as EpiPen. Currently, it has been advised to dental practices that they don't have auto-injectors as there has been a national shortage. However, you may have them. So if you do, yes, they'd be in the drug kit. Um, next one then is your ampoules. Your ampoules there, you should have one in 1,000, not one in 10,000, one in 1,000 ampoules of adrenaline ready to be used. Now, it's okay having them, but what you will need is also all the syringes to draw up needles, the snapper to actually use them. So often what I find is that the ampoules are in the drawer in a plastic bag ready to be used, but you don't have the one mil syringes and the other accessories to use it. So inside there, you should have one mil syringes, not two mil, not five mil, because when you come to measure up your drug dosage there, there's only one mil of fluid in a one mil ampoule. So you need a one mil syringe so you get the drug dosage correct. Also in there, you should have snappers. Now I know traditionally as we've broken ampoules over the years, we, we've used our hands or a bit of lint or a bit of tissue, we guess what? We often finish up also um, shattering the bottle or we go and get a, a, an injury ourselves. So ideally, best practice, we should have a snapper in there also. Snapper, uh, following on from that, you need a draw up needle. The whole idea of a draw up needle is that it's blunt. It also has a filter inside. So when you draw up from the ampoule, from your one mil syringe there. If you did break the ampoule, it at least tries to filters out the glass. So have a draw up needle, best practice, uh, reduce any chance of needle stick injuries. And then 
you'll need your iron needles. Um, it's advocated we use the blue needle in general use. The green needles are a little bit longer and a wider gauge, okay? So if someone does have a lot of fatty tissue, then you would be going for the green needle, but the blue one is the one to use. So with your anaphylaxis kit then, that's what should be in there. Amples, draw up needles, IM needles, a snapper for best practice there, and your medications. And don't forget, if you haven't got your drug doses written down, you need to know them. You can't guess in a medical emergency. Just moving on, um, we're gonna have a look at um, seizures, um, epilepsy. Um, this is one where you should have, ideally, your Midazolam, and that's all of Midazolam. And it often comes in a package like so, um, and inside there is your little bottle, okay? So keep it inside the packaging. There's your bottle there. Your bottle has five mils of fluid inside it um, and four syringes. And the syringes all inside the packet would be like this. And the whole idea is that you should be able to take the top off, draw up the appropriate drug dose. So again, it's okay having your my, or all my dad's lamb in your kit ready for use, but are you rescue ready? Do you know your drug dosages for the four year old? for the six year old, for the 10 year old and adult, okay? You need them in there, so make sure um, it's ready in your kit. Um, now, when you order your Oral My Dad's Lamb, often you're given four syringes, but there's five mil of fluid inside. They've given you an extra mil for spillages, okay? That's quite normal then. So it doesn't look like there's a lot in there, but in short, there's four dosages. The likelihood of you needing four dosages is very slim indeed. It's just the way it's presented. So that's your all of my Dazlam. I know some practices also have my Dazlam in amples, and uh, they're not licensed to be used in a medical emergency, but it's accepted from all governing bodies that in extreme emergency, you can use the my Dazlam from amples. However, you will need to be very, very careful because some of them, um, 10 milligrams in 10 mil of fluid. Well, that's a lot of fluid to be administering to someone who's having a seizure orally, okay? So ideally, if you do have them amples, you need um, 10 milligrams in two mils of fluid, which makes it far more easier to manage. So there's your epilepsy one then. Have it in there, nice and ready. Again, colour coded where everyone knows where it is. And uh, last but not least, but the diabetes. And in the diabetes one, you should all have a glucose meter. Here's a glucose meter there. Um, there's various different types on the market, but you will need a meter. You will ideally need these single use lancets. Now, many practices have the glucose kit and they have a general use lancet for doing the pinprick as it were, um, for taking the blood drop. The only trouble is with that, it is liable or likely to spread infection when you use them. The, the multi-use ones are designed for single use for a single person at home using it all the time, not in emergency use. So emergency use, we tend to use these single lancets, which are um, use them once and then um, throw them away. Okay, so you should have a range of them in there with your um, glucose sticks. They're gonna be in there also, okay? Just a little tip there, these sticks cost a fortune. So quite often, because you're not using these glucose meters all the time, often it's cheaper to go and buy a whole new unit at 15 pounds from your chemist because you get the sticks with them, okay? So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, also, you have glucogel, otherwise known as hypostop. Three tubes should be in your kit there. That's for when a patient is um, having an onset of hypoglycemic di diabetic attack there. And you can use that oral glucose as long as they can protect their airway, okay? That should be in there. Last one then, glucagon. Um, that's normally kept in the fridge. Okay, you can keep in the kit, um, but it's often kept in the fridge there, keeping it all ready in the colour coded kit. Ready, rescue ready. That's where you need to be. I cannot advocate enough to ensure you have your kit in colour coded pouches. Have to hand 
that hasn't, that doesn't have to be my manual. But all I'm saying here is colour coded, have your drug dosages, have your treatment guidelines there ready to reduce the stress of dealing with a medical emergency. So that's the Rescue Ready kit. Um, I truly believe the kit together, to be honest with you, colour coded with the manual is the UK's first Rescue Ready colour coded kit written by myself and, and our team to the national guidelines. We do also an update service you can um, subscribe to. You can see it all on our shop page on our website. If you have any other questions or you need any other help in your practice regards setting up and ensuring you're up to speed uh, with your guidelines, then please do give us a call. Thank you.